Yeah, welcome to my video blog, Questions of Doubt in Corporate Valuation. My name is Bernhard Schwetzler, and our today's question of doubt in corporate valuation is what is the circularity problem, and is a Newton approximation a good way to solve and to tackle this circularity problem? Yeah? So, the circularity problem is closely related to the quite popular WAC approach, and here you see the equation for the WAC. The WAC, as the name suggests, weighted average cost of capital is the cost of equity and the net cost of debt, and the average over the two. And you see here the weights uh, for weighing the two and calculating this average is equal to the capital structure of the firm. Yeah? So the weight of equity is equity over equity plus debt, and the weight uh, of the cost of debt is debt over equity plus debt. Yeah? So, and the circularity problem uh, stems from the fact that, uh, according to this equation, these two weights here should be measured in market values. Yeah? And that creates a particular problem because that would require us to know something that is the value of the equity that we are just on our way to calculate. Yeah? We are just on our way to calculate the value of the enterprise, knowing the WAC, and then finally the result is then the value of the equity. Yeah? So that is the circularity problem. Yeah? We would need to know something that we just try to calculate that is the value of our equity. Yeah? So there are two ways to tackle this problem. The first one, the simpler one, is a proposal that has been made by practitioners and scientists alike. That is, you start by defining yourself a, a target capital structure, plug it in then, calculate the WAC, do your calculation, calculate the enterprise value, finally the equity value, and then finally check on whether, according to the results of your valuation, the leverage ratios and the weights here in the capital structure are close to what you have assumed as here at the beginning uh, of the WAC as a target capital structure. The second approach does not stop here but continues with the calculation, and that is something that I would like to show you how this is going to work. This is an extension that is solving the problem by iteration by a so-called Gauss-Newton uh, approximation. So what we need to do here is uh, the free cash flow as an assumption. We start with a particular capital structure, the target capital structure. We need to have our cost of debt and our asset beta, that is the operating risk of the firm shall be given. And then the first step is plug in your target capital structure here and calculate the equity beta by multiplying the asset beta with this um, leverage factor. In here we use the Hamada equation, that is the leverage times one minus the corporate tax rate plus one. And that yields then the equity beta. Knowing the equity beta, plugging it into the capital as a pricing model gives us the cost of equity. Once we know the cost of equity and the cost of debt, and knowing the leverage, we can calculate the WAC. Knowing the WAC and combining it with the free cash flow gives us the enterprise value, deducting the value of debt from the enterprise value or the value of net debt, depending on the approach, gives us the equity value. And the last step is then, as in the method one, calculate the resulting leverage by combining the debt or net debt and the equity. Yeah? And now this iteration process restarts the entire thing by plugging the resulting leverage into the calculation model at the beginning and recalculating everything now with this new leverage. Yeah? And the idea of this iteration is you start to do this and you do this process, this iteration process, until finally the resulting leverage is equal to the leverage that you had plugged in into this model at the beginning. Yeah? So here is how this is going to work. With Excel. So you see here that we start out with a leverage ratio of one. So you see here, this is our asset beta. This is the corporate tax rate. This is our leverage. 
So the market risk premium and the riskless rates uh, are needed to calculate our cost of equity. But the first thing is, as you can see here, uh, we make the step in combining the asset beta, the tax rate and the leverage to calculate our equity beta, which is 1.2. Knowing the equity beta allows us to calculate the cost of equity, combining the cost of equity with the WAC based on these leverage ratios yields a WAC of 5.6%. Applying the WAC upon these free cash flows that are given is here giving us an enterprise value of 14 million. Our current debt or net debt is 10 million. So we finally end up with a value of the equity of 4 million. Now applying these um, results and calculating our resulting leverage, you see here that the net debt is 2.5 times the equity value and that results on a leverage of 2.46 which is pretty much away from the one that we have plugged in into the beginning yeah and now with excel it is quite simple here that we say this difference shall be equal to zero and our target variable is the leverage at the beginning and you see finally we end up here <clears throat> with a leverage ratio of 1.2 1.244 and finally, the resulting leverage is also close to 1.244 or 2.45. Yeah? So you see finally that this iteration yields the result that what we have plugged in at the beginning is in that sense reproduced finally by our results. Yeah? And so the question is then, is this a good idea? Finally, yeah. So... I do not think that this is a good idea to solve the circularity problem for two important reasons. The first one is the leverage choice is a strategic decision of the firm's management. Yeah? We teach our students hours and class hours long that the choice of the capital structure is important and that there are several quite complicated models to do this. The idea is by and large, so the most popular version of the capital structure theory says that you have to weigh the benefits of debt, that is tax deductibility of interest against the disadvantage uh, of debt, that is bankruptcy costs. So it is complicated, it is important. So this, in that sense, target leverage ratio does not fall from the sky. Yeah? So, and the thing is then that, of course, you would not want that uh, this strategic choice is driven by a valuation method that simply then happily finally uh, calculates consistent valuation. Yeah? So in that sense, the capital structure choice is the dog and the value follows then this capital structure choice. Yeah? And it's not the other way around that uh, the tail wags the dog uh, and uh, the valuation model finally, in that sense, forces you to accept a particular capital structure. And the second reason why I do not think that it's a wise idea to apply this is that not just only the cost of equity and the beta factors should be um, adjusted to changes in the leverage, but also the cost of debt. Yeah? So in our case here, we have been working with the cost of debt of 4%. And so, of course, as you increase the leverage gradually, of course, the credit risk uh, for the bank and for uh, the debt holders is going to increase. And so they will also adjust their cost of debt. Yeah? So it is not sufficient just to adjust the cost of equity. You would need to adjust the cost of debt as well. Yeah? And as I said, this is also one of the factors that should affect your strategic choice um, of your capital structure and of your time to maturity and your maturity structure. So I am still convinced that the classic way without this iteration process that you strategically choose your financing policy, these two variables, leverage and maturity, and then finally check on whether your valuation results are grossly in line with the target financing policy that you have picked is the better way. And if you really push too far away, then you may first adjust your level of debt accordingly. That brings you closer to your target capital structure. Or finally, if this is not easily possible, maybe you still then have to say goodbye, but this time for a good reason from your target leverage um, in the corporate valuation. 
So that's it for today. Thank you.